Uh, welcome to third video of uh, this linear integrated triple five timer and its application. So we shall continue with the uh, mono shot. In the previous video we were discussing uh, the fourth stage of uh, the mono shot operation. So in this particular case we are considering the capacitor is uh, capacitor voltage is uh, just greater than the VTH value and uh, the corresponding uh, trigger voltage condition is uh, more than VTL I can see we are actually operating in this condition so that's what is uh, indicated here this is uh, the uh, red strip indicates that okay we are operating in this region now this is the capacitor voltage what we are discussing it is just above VTH and uh, the trigger voltage is uh, uh, more than VTL so maybe close to VCC that's what is the condition here so the V trigger is uh, where the trigger is applied it is plus VCC here the capacitor voltage is more than VTH so since it is more than VTH we know that V plus is now more than V minus this will become uh, the first comparator output becomes VCC now here you can see uh, the V plus of the second comparator is uh, VTL Whereas V minus of the second comparator is VCC, which makes the second comparator output voltage as zero. So we have the condition: uh, the reset is zero and set is sorry, uh, reset is high and uh, set is zero, which will make the output to be uh, zero. So once immediately as the output becomes uh, uh, zero, this Q bar becomes uh, VCC or five volt, which will make the transistor to turn on. Once transistor turns on. The capacitor voltage uh, has got path to discharge. Now this capacitor start discharging through this. Now capacitor will immediately discharges through uh, this transistor because this is turned on. As you can see now, as the capacitor voltage slightly exceeds the VTH, so it is dropping down quickly. So this indicates that as soon as the capacitor voltage tries to go above VTH, so it is uh, forced to discharge to ground. So meaning, so this is forced to discharge the ground through this transistor Q1. So that's what is indicated here. Uh, as soon as uh, uh, the capacitor voltage exceeds VTH, that is when T is slightly greater than the pulse width. So when uh, the time period is greater than the pulse width. So reset becomes 1, set becomes 0 and the output becomes 0. The BJT turns on. The timing capacitor discharges to 0 volt through BJT with a time constant R into C. So this R is now the on resistance of the BJT. Now since it is discharging through the resistance offered by the BJT, capacitor discharges almost instantaneously as R on of the BJT is very very small. So it may be in terms of few uh, tens of uh, hundreds of ohms. So it comes down very quickly. So that's why as we can uh, see here this discharges quickly it is not taking too much time and it is discharging it is quickly discharging to zero so once uh, this discharges to zero now the capacitor voltage is fully discharged to zero the output uh, is now at uh, zero volt so this is at zero volt now the trigger is at VCC this is exactly the condition uh, what we are discussing here so the capacitor voltage once it exceeds this now capacitor voltage becomes zero so that's what is uh, the vc is equal to zero now we are there in the fifth stage which is exactly the first stage of the uh, mono shot so this is exactly the first stage first stage here also this is in the first stage so we have the first stage second third and this is exactly the fourth and we are in the fifth stage now in the fifth stage the reset and sets are 0, 0, the output is 0, BJT is on, the capacitor is fully discharged to 0 and the flip-flop will be there in the no change condition. So now you can see uh, this says that the output voltage remains there in uh, 0 volt as long as there is no more trigger applied. So this is a summary of uh, mono shot. So when the trigger voltage is VCC, so which is greater than VTL so we are in stage 1 so it is reset is equal to 0 and set is equal to 0 output remains there in 0 state BJT is on capacitor is fully discharged to 0 uh, flip flop will not change its state so it remains to be there in uh, the 0 state which is a stable state once it goes here 
So as the trigger voltage goes less than VTL, now we are actually entering the quasi-stable state. Stage 2 happens to be the quasi-stable state. Now uh, when it is stage 2, that is when the trigger is less than VTL, it sets the output. So S becomes VCC, R is 0, which will make the output voltage as high. So once output is high, BJT turns off. When BJT turns off, capacitor starts charging towards VCC through that resistor R. Now you can see flip-flop is set now. So flip-flop is set here. Now it enters the quasi-stable state. Now uh, the trigger has been removed. Now you can see now the trigger is made VCC, which means that it is disabled. But uh, this the pulse width is still less than the uh, the time is still less than the pulse width. So in such case, capacity is still charging. So capacity is still charging. Uh, the reset and set becomes zero zero. The output remains to be there in VCC, meaning that so we are actually there in uh, this state. Now we are there in this state. Now the capacitor is still charging, it is less than VTH, the output remains in the previous state that is uh, VCC. Now you can see it was VCC, it remaining is VCC. Now this stage 2 and stage 3 are still in the quasi stable state. Stage 1 was, it was there in the uh, stable state of 0. Now it entered the quasi stable state in stage 2. In stage 3 it is remaining in the quasi stable state. Here you can see as it slightly exceeds uh, the VTH. As you can see, it, it, when the capacitor voltage slightly exceeds VTH, it is slightly the pulse width is greater than this T. So once it is greater than T, the MOSFET turns on here. The MOSFET turns on, as you can see here, the MOSFET turns on here. So once MOSFET turns on, the when reset is one, MOSFET turns on, the capacitor voltage discharges, the flip flop resets. Meaning, when trigger is more than VTL, the output remains in stable state of uh, uh, zero here once it is once the trigger is less than vtl it goes to vcc it enters the quasi stable state it remains in that state till this uh, pulse width elapses as soon as the pulse width elapses the bjt turns on it makes your capacitor discharges very quickly it comes down immediately so that's what is uh, we discussed so far now we are supposed to obtain an expression for this pulse width which is it can be obtained using the capacitor equation which is given by vc is the capacitor equation vc is equal to which is the capacitor voltage is equal to vf minus vf minus v initial into e power minus t by rc so this vf actually stands for the final voltage vi stands for the initial voltage t is the time rc is the time constant now uh, we are supposed to find what is the pulse width this T what we are talking about. So this is the capacitor voltage Now what is this VI? VI is the initial voltage. So as you can see now the initially the capacitor voltage is 0 So that's why we are substituting this VI as 0 VF is substituted as VCC. Now VF is uh, The value of VF is that voltage if the capacitor is allowed to charge for infinite, so it will be going to VCC. That's what is shown here. So it can be allowed to go to VCC if there is no restriction. That's what is final voltage. VF is nothing but the capacitor final voltage as T tends to zero. If it is allowed to charge, it can go up to VCC only. So that's what is VF is equal to VCC. But at when the time is equal to capital T, so when the time is equal to capital T, the capacitor voltage, this is your capacitor voltage will becomes VTH. So this is VTH. So at T is equal to capital T, this VC becomes two third of VCC, which is nothing but VTH here. So substituting these values of VI is equal to zero and VF, V final is equal to VCC and this small t is equal to capital T and uh, capacitor voltage VC is equal to two third of VCC. The equation is this now. So it is V final minus V final minus V initial into E power minus T by RC. So upon rearranging the terms, we get ln of uh, 3 into RC, which happens to be 1.1 into RC. So this is the equation what we used uh, in the uh, earlier uh, diagram. So it remains there in the stable state depending on the value of R and C. Suppose if you change the value of R and C, this width changes. So this trigger width will not actually matter for deciding this width. Actually, this actually initiates 
its uh, uh, process to go to quasi stable state once it is initiated so it has got no control over the width so the width of the output voltage is fully controlled by the resistance and the capacitors and of course the constant 1.1 so this 1.1 is, is coming because it will be charged up to 2 third vcc and there is a final voltage of vcc suppose if this vcc changes then naturally uh, what irrespective of the value of vcc whether it is 5 volt 10 volt or uh, 15 volt this time remains constant so this time is exactly 1.1 into r into c so let us consider uh, a design of mono shot so this is type 1 in this uh, uh, design uh, specifications are given the specification is the t is asked to be 1 millisecond so using this expression we can actually get the value of uh, uh, r and c so that we can get a uh, pulse width of 1 millisecond with the assumption of uh, c as 0 0.1 microfarad we uh, get the value of uh, resistance as 18.18 kilo ohm similarly for uh, 500 microfarad so i think there is there is a mistake over here i, I want you to uh, verify what is the value of this r and uh, this r using this expression so what is this value of r so similarly for uh, a specification of 12 millisecond assuming the value of uh, c is equal to 0 0.01 microfarad uh, you, you can find what is the value of this i think this is uh, fine with that okay can we can just verify what the value of this r so it is very simple calculation maybe some mistake over there so in the second type <coughs> the values of r and c are given so this is what is specification the values of external component r and c are given we are asked to estimate the value of uh, the time what is the pulse width so with the value of r as 2.2 .2 kilo ohms and c as 0 0.1 microfarad the t comes out to be 242 microsecond similarly in the second design we have 470 now these are uh, different uh, designs so this is first design with r as 2.2 uh, k and uh, 0 0.17 sorry 0 0.1 microfarad which results in a uh, pulse width of 242 microsecond Similarly, in the second design, it is 470 ohms and 0.1 microfarad. It is 51.7 microseconds. You can similarly find what is the uh, uh, possible pulse width if the values of external resistance as 5.6 kilo ohms and C as 0 0.01 microfarad. And similarly for this particular value of R and C. Now, this way we can uh, uh, do the design of mono shot. So, very important thing over here is that so the mono shot remains there in the stable state as long as no signal applied so this is no signal matlab any trigger signal less than uh, any any signal more than vtl happens to be an invalid trigger signal so as long as we are applying a, any voltage which is more than vtl the output remains there in zero state as soon as the trigger voltage goes uh, below uh, vtl that is uh, that is one third vcc the output starts to be there in quasi stable state for a predefined time which is decided by this t so this t is exactly decided by the values of r and c so how do we decide that t is that purely depends on uh, this t is nothing but the time taken by the capacitor to go to uh, vth so uh, that is higher threshold voltage as soon as it goes to higher threshold voltage output goes to zero so this remains there in zero unless we apply one more uh, signal which is going below vtl suppose assume that it, it goes below vtl here then the output goes high when output goes high the capacitor starts charging so this is how uh, the mono shot uh, operates so i hope uh, all of you understood the working of uh, the triple fire timer as a mono shot it is purely depending on uh, the trigger signal and the corresponding comparator voltages which will actually make your uh, flip-flop to set and reset once uh, the flip-flops and set and reset which will make your uh, capacitor to charge or discharge depending on the uh, BJT whether it is on or off if you are through with uh, all these uh, uh, concepts then you can very effectively understand this mono shot uh, operation by triple five timer thank you we shall see uh, next video which is an a stable multi-operator.